Good day everybody, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel and today we cover history of satellite communications. Remember that only those who know the past can make the future. Historical background. In 1850, telegraph cables had been laid across the ocean. So no, no voice yet. You can do telegraph across the ocean. 1945, high frequency radio was the only method for transcontinental or intercontinental calls, distances, but that's not very much reliable. In 1945, the same year, a writer called Clark, his show, his picture is shown here, he suggested in the British Radio Magazine Wireless World that it's possible to make a radio relay satellite in an equatorial orbit with a period of 24 hours that is stationary, that remains stationary with respect to the Earth and can carry communication signals. It just was just a write up. And then uh, about 1953, cables carrying voice signals across the Atlantic started. So we now we have voice signals across continents. Now, in 1957, that's how many years? About 12 years later, the first man made that dream turn out to be true by the Soviet Union in 1957, the USSR. They launched their first satellite, which is Sputnik 1, using a German satellite called V2 rocket. I will show you the pictures in the coming slides. They followed this with the second uh, satellite, Sputnik 2. Uh, not much later, the American, uh, in the next year, American uh, sent their Explorer 1, was first, it, it was the first US satellite and the first satellite to carry uh, science measurement equipment there is no communication yet and then it was followed by score which was the first voice that's in january that's in december the same year the first voice communication established by satellite they use low earth orbit and it lasts for about 35 days in orbit before it fails here's a picture of explorer one this is the picture of the first satellite uh, sputnik one it was the first artificial earth satellite it was launched into uh, elliptical low earth orbit and that was in 1957 as we mentioned and that's a picture of the launching process and the details of the german satellite used let's continue with the historical background quickly in 1960 first passive communication satellite launched into space that's called ik1 and ik2 I'm, again i'm showing you it's like a large balloon I will show you the picture in the coming slides. 1962, 1963, the first true communication satellite, true communication satellite that you, you can rely on, Telstar 1 and Telstar 2. They were built by Bell Labs and used the C band and, and with a very specific frequency. I'm just sharing you the idea that they were working on 6 gig, 4 gig frequencies, and the bandwidth was 50 megahertz. In 1961, um, International Telecommunication Union was. Uh, established was recommended internet for international cooperation that's itu and then of course for commercial arrangement intelsat which is uh, abbreviation abbreviation of the international telecommunication telecommunication satellite organization was established and then of course in 1965 the first stationary satellite early bird intelsat one that's the first stationary satellite and the geostationary orbit provide long distance telephone services and of course later we have tv and uh, uh, was uh, could be broadcasted across the atlantic comsat that's not far away by the way before then you cannot have video uh, uh, tv broadcasting comsat was uh, the company to manage intelsat with series of satellites intelsat 1 and we have intelsat 2 3 and until we have until sat 5 uh, national satellite services and the russian also the soviet union made the molinia first a highly elliptical orbit satellite <coughs> sorry and then canada have their their geostationary earth orbit and they were used for national services in 1985 <coughs> the bandwidth was ex expanded from ku band we have other frequency bands which were dedicated. We'll discuss these later on coming videos, LSC, K, uh, KUK bands uh, for satellite communication. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so 
so here are some pictures uh echo one that's the look like a big balloon you can see the people standing here this is the first communication satellite uh, until sat one how it looks and this is in 1962 first non-government active communication satellite launched by uh, telestar that's telestar one now let's continue with the historical background quickly um, after that video distribution vsat which we know now we are using at homes maybe with the vsat the very small aperture and terminal where you have a small antenna that you can put uh, at the top of your uh, in, the, in the roof then you can get the tv satellite tv channels and it can also be used for internet or what have you in 1995 other band expanded like k band and uh, it's used for digital traffic rather than analog for marine application ships aircrafts the International Maritime Satellite Organization in Marsat. So this is for marine applications to follow up with the ships uh, and, and transportation and so on. 19, in the period from 1998 to 2000, low Earth orbit and medium Earth orbit, there were companies trying to cover the entire Earth with a network of satellites. And that, that's to replace the, the mobile uh, phone uh, base stations. And the companies, including uh, Radium, 1998, Global Star, and Obercom, Obercom, Orcom, and uh, all these companies, they were a big hype at that time, but they did not continue. They, they, they proved to be very costly, and Radium cost, for example, $5 billion. It was sold only for $25 million. That's only 0.5% of the original price. Global positioning systems satellites are used not just for communication, for local localization. So the American system is the GPS system. It costs $12 billion. Uh, the Russian equivalent system is the GLONASS, the Russian uh, navigation, Russian global navigation system. And also we had um, the European uh, system, which is uh, called Galileo. And uh, Galileo, for example, in, 19, in 2016 Europe, global navigation system genesis galileo uh, went live uh, before then in 2010 uh, european uh, or eu telsat launched other series with narrow band uh, spot beams we'll discuss these as we go on with multiple base stations so you can see the development through the years and recently uh, we hear about elon musk and Sp uh, spacex starlink Lots of people are thinking and using constellation of satellites, group of satellites, network of satellite, mission network connected to cover the entire Earth. And of course, uh, among these companies, including uh, Amazon, Telesat. So I'm sure you can uh, Google this and this would change as we go on time. I'm, I'm keeping some references here for the pictures and the sources where I get some of, or some of this information. The, the question that remains is what is going to come to happen next so if you close your eyes and think for a while and type in the chat what you write what you would think and that would that could happen in the future before i conclude this video i'd like to share with you a few a few information about satellite communication in saudi arabia and uh, you might uh, know that saudi arabia has several simple communication satellites that are in orbit and currently they are advanced there are more uh, than 16 satellites already on orbit they start with small ones and some of them are um, uh, made from scratch these satellites were built by king abdulaziz city from for science and technology they have the national satellite center and there are also some small uh, cube sets or micro satellites with a very small size uh, they are usually launched through uh, kazakhstan or other uh, uh, states which were connected with, with russia before um, so they also have a bright future and uh, as part of the plan for the uh, vision of the kingdom to have research in futuristic application so we have the saudi space commission and uh, that's their website uh, if you want to, to know more about uh, the, the activities and we have also we have the national satellite center and uh, so they also has uh, contributes to the fund of uh, arabsat which is a satellite company so this just give you an idea about the development uh, uh, in different parts of the world. Thank you and we'll see you in the coming video.